The debate of whether to add pricing to your website or not has heated up over on TikTok and I decided it's time to weigh in. And me personally, we did not have pricing on our website for the first 14 years of doing business. But now my feet are firmly planted on the side of yes, you definitely should have pricing listed on your website. I'm digging into all of this today in this episode and it's chock full of practical, tangible tips that you can implement today. So grab your coffee, make sure it's hot, and let's dig into this episode together. So the age old question that comes up over and over again, should you have pricing on your wedding business website? And the short answer is yes, you absolutely should. I have not always believed that this was the right answer because I personally did not want to have pricing on my website, but I also didn't have a preference on whether you should or not. That was simply my preference and I really, really didn't have a stance on it. However, back in episode 78 of this podcast, I was talking with Taylor De La Fuente and one of the things that she talked about in that episode was why it's important to have pricing on your website when our ideal customers are looking for a wedding pro. They're embarrassed to ask about pricing sometimes because they honestly have no clue where you fall. And this is the first time they're doing shopping. So they genuinely have no idea where your pricing could possibly fall. And they want to just understand, are you even remotely close to their budget before they reach out? But if you have no pricing on your website, they can bounce to someone else because they're just too embarrassed to ask about the pricing. This actually happened to me recently. It was my oldest daughter's 18th birthday and my mom really wanted to buy her a designer purse. And so we started going in some of the different designers all down Fifth Avenue and quickly we started to realize these aren't the places that we're gonna be able to shop. But what was frustrating and honestly kind of embarrassing was that we genuinely had no idea what a designer purse would cost because there was so many levels of designer out there. Just like with wedding pros, photographers, for instance, can range in pricing from $1,500 all the way up to $15,000 and more. But oftentimes they really genuinely have no idea if you fall somewhere in the $1,500 to maybe $5,000 range. And it can be very, very frustrating for our customers as we, my daughter, my mom, myself, and her friends were walking in and out of these designer stores, there was no pricing listed anywhere. So you had to actually ask an associate what the pricing was for the different things. The frustration and the embarrassment comes in when it's so far out of your budget that you're like, Ugh, if this tiny little wallet is six times my budget for a purse, I shouldn't even be in this store. And so you wanna turn around and walk out, but it's embarrassing to do that. And the same thing is happening with our clients. So we have proudly joined the camp of yes, you need to have pricing on your website, but how, where should you list it? And exactly what should you say? I'm gonna get into all of that in this episode, but before we dig too much into the practical tips, I wanna talk about three different things that I hear from wedding pros when I'm telling them that yes, you should definitely put it on your website because you may be feeling this too, because at the end of the day, I don't want you to just listen to what I say on this podcast and go do it and not understand why. I really want you to understand the why behind every decision that you make in your business. If you're loving this video and you wanna know more about how I help hundreds of wedding pros to two and even three X their revenue all while working less, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a notification for all the tips and strategies I share here on this channel. So the first thing that I hear from wedding pros all the time is I don't wanna put pricing on my website because if I could just get them on the phone, I know I could sell them. And I love this one because it goes right back to my Dior story. Yes, if we would have walked into Dior and we could have found a purse for maybe six or $700, her budget was more like three to $500. But if my daughter loved it that much, my mom likely would have gone ahead and splurged on the six or $700 purse. If you don't buy designer purses, I don't either. I go to Target and buy the $30 purse and I think it works just fine. Everyone has a budget that they're comfortable with. We can't simply double or triple people's wedding budget. That's not realistic. It doesn't make any sense. I don't wanna spend my time with a client who's below my budget because listen, there is a wedding pro for every single 
client out there. And there's a couple for every single wedding pro. That's what I want you to understand. Not everybody is your ideal customer and that has to be okay. So number two that I hear all the time is if I put my pricing on my website, my competitors will see it and they'll be able to use that in their strategy. So the only thing I have to say about this is like, who cares? If they really want to know what your pricing is, they will ghost shop you and they will figure it out anyway. So put it out there loud and proud. Who cares if your competitors know what your pricing is? And number three, if I put my pricing on my website, then I'm gonna get price shopped even more because clients are just going to pick somebody that's less expensive and acquire with them. I talk about marketing on this podcast so often because your marketing should be doing the selling for you and your pricing should just be like one of the factors that they're considering. Your marketing should describe the experience of working with you and why you are worth what you're charging. So you have to understand your competitive edge in your market. Who exactly is it that you serve and what is your ideal customer? If you're not sure about some of these things, there's a couple of episodes that I want you to go back and listen to. Episode 78 that I already talked about, episode 165, and episode 217. You guys, all three of these episodes are gonna really get in your gut and help you to understand how to market before someone even wants to know what your pricing is. So now you get it and you're like, okay, Brandy, I got you, but where do I need to add it to my website? I'm so glad that you asked because there's three places that you're gonna add it. Most of the time, people go to number one, which is your services page. But something I want you to really think about here is that I want it to be loud and proud. You know that your pricing is worth it and make sure that it's clearly listed under each of your packages. The next place I also want you to list it is on your contact us page. Honestly, you guys, a lot of people are bypassing the rest of your website and they're going straight to your contact us page because they've been on your Instagram or your Pinterest or your TikTok and they're ready to inquire now. So on your contact us page, right around the submit button of your contact form, I want you to put our pricing starts at or our pricing ranges from. Okay, and the last place I want you to put it is on your online scheduler. But I wanna make sure that there's a checkbox that says, yes, I understand the starting prices are or I have reviewed the packages and understand that pricing ranges from X to X because I wanna make sure that by the time I get on that consultation that pricing is not something that I even need to worry if they know my pricing or not. All right, so now you know exactly where you're gonna list it and you know why you're listing pricing on your website. But what are you gonna say? I think there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but here's three different ways that you can add the pricing to your website. So number one would just be to list the pricing under each of your packages and say starting at. You've got package number one and you can say starts at blank. Package number two starts at blank. So super, super simple. Number two is to give a typical amount of money that people spend with you. I think this works really great for wedding pros such as florists or stationers, more custom type of wedding pros. So you could say something like our minimum for weekend events is $4,000 and our typical client spends between six and $8,000. So that's a really great way of giving people an example of the pricing that they can expect and helping them to understand that you're not gonna go out for less than 4,000 on a weekend. So you don't have to list out all your pricing and say, but on a Tuesday, we're this much. We're just trying to give them a general idea of how much they're gonna spend if they inquire with you. And number three is gonna be a range. So it could say something like, our pricing ranges from $3,000 to $7,000. I think this would be the tiptoe method, but it is my least favorite because it really doesn't tell them exactly the price range for what they're looking for for their wedding and the service that they're looking for from you. Okay, CEO, so we covered a lot in this episode, but by now you should have some really tangible tips on exactly why, how, and where you you should list the pricing on your website. And CEO, if you're listening to this and you're like, gosh, this was so, so helpful, I wanna invite you to join us inside the Wedding Pro CEO Accelerator. You can click the link down in the show notes below to join us inside the Accelerator or DM me over on Instagram. I'm at Brandy Gar. If you have questions about how I can help you to double and even triple your revenue. If you love this video, make sure to check out my three-part series called the Make Money Series, all about how to increase your revenue and to start paying yourself a salary. You guys, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Thank you.